Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Francesco Nepitello, uh, looking at a overview of the hunt for the ring. This is non-final materials, and also don't expect to see this, but you can tell us what the game is like. This is a co-design with uh, Marco Maggi yep. and yes. and Gabriele Mari, the designer of yes. what Chapel. Yes, and uh, there's a reason for that because yes, he is very yeah. well known for sort of the the hidden hidden movement, movement type of games. Yes, yes. so. How has that been incorporated in, in the Lord of the Rings world? Well, it was, um, I think it was an idea of Roberto Di Meglio, the, the uh, product developer for Ares Games, to make a game, a hidden movement game, having to do with the Lord of the Rings. He had different ideas in the beginning. We proposed uh, a game that was about the, the missing part of the book that we do not explore in uh, War of the Ring. Because as the, the, the fans of War of the Ring know, uh, the War of the Ring starts with the, the Fellowship of the Ring already leaving Rivendell. So we're missing those chapters of the book that deal with Frodo leaving Hobbiton and going to, to Rivendell. So we thought it could, have been, could be a good idea since this game will be part of the War of the Ring line of games. Uh, to explore that instead of, for example, making a hidden movement of the Fellowship from Rivendell to Mordor. Right. So we said, let's start from the very first part of the book. And since it was a hidden movement game, we started experimenting ideas. We, me and Marco Maggi, we work together in Venice in the same city, so it, yeah. it's really easy for us to work together on, on projects. Uh, when we started developing the game, we saw that it was simply natural to, to go and find meet Gabriele Mari, that of course we knew him before, uh, because that that's his field, his field of expertise. Right. Uh, we were of course fans of his work, and, and of course being long-time players of hidden game movements like uh, Scotland Yard or Fury of Dracula. So uh, we had a few ideas that we submitted to him, uh, ways to implement a bit differently the, the, the concept of the movement games and, and then everything fell into place with a very quite quite a long development time okay. uh, because as you probably can imagine hidden movement games require a lot of playtesting right. uh, especially because the um, the level of expertise of the players uh, have a deep impact on how the game works and as I can imagine it must be very difficult because of course, um, you, you don't have the same experience of the game, so you in one role is not it's the same in the other different. role. Yes. Yeah. It's completely different, and there's also, you know, the dilemma of a hidden movement game is that uh, the player who's playing the hidden part, uh, of course, knows where he is and where the opponents are, because normally you have one player with one uh, character moving hidden and multiple characters trying to find you out. Uh, so you are the only one who knows exactly that you're in danger or not, right. where the other players might simply be completely in the dark and, and think you're lost to them, where you are really close to them. And that's a thrill that we, we had to, to, to preserve in the design. Uh, so we could not do something that was completely different from that. Right. But at the same time, of course, we needed to be to add something to, to the uh, to the the, 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 um, to the, the series genre. of games yes. to the genre, and and of course to make it really close to the theme of the Lord of the Rings. I think we we really achieved that with with a few uh, with a few things. Uh, one of the things is that the game is played in two parts that are very distinctive, very different, because one part uh, is the one that you can see the, the, the mock-up of the map for, uh, is the, the trip of Frodo from uh, around the area of, of Hobbiton to Bree, to the village of Bree. And the second part deals with the voyage of, of Frodo when he gets uh, guided by Strider from Bree to Rivendell. And the way this plays differently is that in the second part, the, the player controlling Frodo doesn't actually choose the path, but you simply have a, a mechanic of itineraries, that's mock-up simply for playtest, where uh, you know where Frodo is every, every step uh, that he takes, but you, can, you don't control him. So you, okay. you, you are not playing Frodo, because from that moment on, you're actually playing Gandalf. You're playing Gandalf, who's 
play, uh, who's again is moving hidden and your goal in the second part of the game is to confuse the Nazgul uh, about the position of Frodo uh, either by probably moving closely to where he is because the way the Nazgul perceive the presence of Frodo uh, is the same they can perceive the presence of Gandalf so it's a kind of a decoy you can act okay. as decoy but you can tell Frodo that he's moving towards danger because he moves automatically. So, for example, in that case, you can choose to reveal Gandalf and try to scare the Nazgul away and then become hidden again and start again the cycle of trying to decoy the deal. So the two parts of the game completely play differently and that was, okay. I think, the, the best achievement that we could do because they feel like two different games. And in fact, we are... I was are, going to ask, are they actually two different games? I mean, you play each one independently? Uh, or yeah, you that, have to... The idea is that you can play the two back to back mm -hmm. and for throughout the most part of the playtest, we actually play the game back to back. But we are really aiming and we will push also from the way we will present the game uh, to play the game in two different parts in two different evenings uh, because if you play it played back to back it, it's going to be probably a two hours and a half three hours affair right. and we think that the game also for the thrill and the uh, the, the feeling uh, that it creates is better suited for one hour and a half you can't uh, keep up the, the, the tension for three hours without it feeling a bit too much. Okay. So when you play one hour and a half, it's perfect. So we, we developed an idea, um, a way of recording what happened in the first part of the game to the second that it ties very well with the with the theme of the book because it's, if you remember uh, in the books, Frodo eventually finds a letter that Gandalf left him uh, because they don't meet in Bree, but he finds a, a, a letter that he left to the... To the uh, to Barneyman Butterbur, the, the, the owner of the Prince and Pony. And uh, in the game, you put all the uh, material that is connected to part one into an envelope, and then you open okay. it the next evening that you're going to play to play the second part. Okay. So uh, we feel that that's the way it should be played, eventually also because that if the game uh, goes well on the market, we might have more chapters <laughs> okay. uh, after that. That so you can play the game in different. It's. I'm not going to say that it's a sort of a legacy thing because it's not. But you know the idea it's that it's telling you could a story. Play, yeah, and it, it tells a story. So you could play four games in a row with different things. If for the moment it's going to be two evenings, two distinct evenings of gameplay with different feels, different uh, things that go on instead of repeating from one board to the other. Okay. All right. So is that good for an overview? We present a, yeah, sort of the high-level version, I guess. But yeah, I might just add still... maybe a couple of things that the other tie-in element to, to the World of the Ring line of games is that we use a system of action dice reminiscent of the World of, World of the Ring dice. They are used only by the uh, Ring Ride players, the, 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 the Nazgul players. Uh, that are used to limit and uh, the, the, pos the possibilities of Nazgul on doing things. They can okay. perceive the presence of the ring, they can search for it, they can hunt for the fellowship, they can move faster, they can uh, draw and play sorcery cards. And on the other side, Frodo can uh, appeal to the aid of allies that okay. he finds, for example, there is Tom Bombadil, there is the Bounders of the of, of the Shire, wandering companies of elves, and so on. So there's a lot going on. On the first half? Uh, on both, for, on both. Okay. Yeah, because also on the second part you can have allies, but yeah, it's it's less likely. In, in fact, the first part is uh, a bit more complicated because there are more locations uh, for the hidden part thing. The second part is a, feels a bit more like a chase episode. Right. Uh, less locations, less hiding because you, you don't actually have a say in where Frodo is going. So it's, it's more of a tactical struggle between the, uh, free pe the, the uh, Gandalf player and, and the, and the Nazgul. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. It was interesting just to see this. Uh, I guess there's so many different ways that you can approach the subject matter and yeah. figure out what you And the same also, it. I think, uh, type of game. Yes, because I, I we'll see uh, you eventually will see how the, the, the hidden movement also is uh, played out in the game that is of course similar to but not the same as in Whitechapel or uh, Fury of Dracula, Fury of Dracula yes. and so on. Okay.
Okay. Well, thank you very much for the overview. Thank you. Thank you. Hunt, of the, hunt for the ring. <laughs>